when I got to, to Piedmont, and I came from Grady, which is a safety net um, institution in downtown Atlanta, um, so consumerism wasn't really top of my list. Uh, before that, I was in commercial real estate. I mean, I was in, I, I knew nothing about healthcare. So five years ago when I showed up in healthcare, I naively believed that if I just walked in and explained to everybody that this is the ultimate consumer business, they would all be like, yes, this guy's right. Brilliant. Give him a raise. They didn't. Um, I, I was quickly beaten down by physicians in particular when I kept, but I kept preaching consumerism um, because I believed that I mean, everybody has to interact with us at one point or another. Literally everybody has to interact with us. I don't know why in the world we wouldn't behave like a consumer business. And then I woke up a year and a half or two years ago and now everybody is like, consumerism, 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 yay, look, look. I'm like, finally, we're all here. It's a very exciting time to be in healthcare. It's a very exciting time um, to actually care about consumers and want to deliver what's best for them in healthcare. I could not be happier that everybody is, um, is finally here to one degree or another. So this is how we think about it at Piedmont. There are three buckets, access, choice, and experience. Access really is about locations as much as anything, um, but it's about how do we provide easy access to healthcare when people need it. It's a really simple concept. We've got all of these sort of sub-bullets, but at the end of the day, access and convenience is the number one thing people are looking for in healthcare. Now, I'm not, then that's not, that's not to say that when you're diagnosed with some weird form of cancer that you're just going to run down to the community hospital and get them to take care of it. But for your average interaction with healthcare, access and convenience is number one, period. We see it every single day. Choice. Choice to me really is about transparency. And this is a reflection of where we are as a society. When you think about buying things today, you rely on your experience with that, right? But let's say you don't have much experience or you're looking for something different or new and going out to a restaurant. When's the last time that you bought something worth more than a couple of bucks where you didn't seek other consumers' opinions about it first? Choice isn't about telling people who you are and what's awesome about your product. Choice is about how do you leverage what other people are saying about your product to help give people everything they need to know to make the best decision for themselves? And finally, experience. So I mentioned a second ago, uh, patient experience reports to me, that is odd in a health system. You won't find many health systems where they said to the marketing guy, you can have patient experience because that's <laughs> it's too close to saying to the marketing guy, you can have control of some operations which they're always afraid of. But I've, I've uh, begged my boss, the CEO, Kevin Brown, he's been there for about three years now. About a year after he got there, I started begging him for experience. Because it seemed pretty clear to me that in most consumer-centric organizations, marketing is measuring and, and helping frame the experience. Because the experience starts at the minute you start considering something. The very, very beginning of, product, of a consideration of a purchase, that's the experience. And in healthcare, um, that's historically been the domain of the clinician. Most of the systems you run up on have a doctor or a nurse in charge of patient experience. Not saying that there isn't a in, uh, place for that, of course there is, but if you put somebody who typically works off a checklist as their job, and I want my doctors to have a checklist, like, did I take all the sponges out? Yes, excellent, right? It's, it's important to have a checklist when you're working as a clinician, but it's not, um, it's not the way to deliver the best experience. Experience is empathetic, it's emotional. Um, you want people to feel something. There's gotta be more depth to it than just a checklist. And so, convinced him finally to give me experience, and by doing that, We've created a completely different view, which I'll talk about in a little bit, 
that we're calling the Piedmont Way, which starts from consideration, goes all the way through the bill, and every point in between. And how do we make that easy? How do we make it simple for the customer? Um, and and um, <laughs> how long is that going to take us? A long time. Access. These guys are the guardians of access. They do not want you to get through. That's what healthcare feels like to people right now. It's like, I, hey, I need to see a doctor. Like I said to Ellen this morning, like if you just woke up and you get this weird rash on your arm, you're like, I think I need to see a doctor. Think about how long it would take you to actually get in and see your doctor. Longer than the rash will last. I guarantee you that. A third of patients say they'd switch providers if presented with a more convenient personal experience. It's really important to note that there are more players in this game whose number one selling point is convenience. 38% of customers say they used an urgent care last year. How many people in this room used an urgent care in the past 12 months? That's probably 38%. 26% use an app for healthcare information. I suspect there, there's more than that in this room given what you guys do for a living. 11% use virtual visits. I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming fast. Um, the thing that's holding virtual visits back, and I can, I'm gonna get into it just a little bit more in a second, um, is that trust factor, right? It's hard to say I'm gonna use Doctor On Demand or Teladoc or one of those other folks because you don't know who's on the other end. The minute that we put Piedmont's name on the front of that and it's Piedmont on call, it changes. For customers in Atlanta, it changes. It's like they don't know necessarily that all of the doctors they're talking to are based in Washington or Nebraska. They're licensed in Georgia. They're great clinicians. You put Piedmont's name on it, then it's a name that they trust. Doctor on demand, you're like, mm, I'll try it if I'm not actually worried that I'm sick. third of consumers say they'd switch to an unfamiliar but more affordable health care provider. I'll get into price transparency in a second, but just a little bit. More importantly, <laughs> this is when we got into the urgent care business is the first time that people inside the organization started to think of us like partially as a retail company, actually started looking at our locations as if they were retail locations. And yes, we have a big hospital, but, but think of it, I, so I come from commercial real estate, so I think like a retail developer would, I think in bands, right? One, three, five. Think about how far from a location will somebody travel to get to it and how do we build a network that meets the needs of all the customers in those locations. Health systems do not think like this right now. We got to where we are by acquiring physicians' offices in other places, acquiring hospitals in other places, and where do we end up? We end up with like five guys, you know, five um, hospital, I mean, uh, doctor's offices in one location in one neighborhood. And everybody's so afraid of the doctors that they don't consolidate and move them around. We've actually stopped doing that now, at least with our employed guys. They're like, hey, sorry, you're moving. Start putting people in locations that make sense for the customer. So as we started to market our retail offerings, we, we worked hard on how do we develop a brand um, that makes sense for them. Beyond that, Piedmont On Call. So I mentioned a second ago we have a virtual visit service. Um, we actually launched it with a startup in Atlanta, which has since failed. So I, we have to be one of, if not the only health system in the country that has used two different providers for our virtual visits. Um, these are not, uh, visits are not provided by Piedmont physicians. It's a service that we contract out completely. And you, what you may be thinking is, but isn't that fooling the consumer? I know most hospitals um, in Metro Atlanta staff their emergency rooms with staffing companies. Those aren't employed physicians. It's, this is how people are receiving care all over the, all over the city, all over the country. Um, most important to this, though, is this is a direct reaction to what consumers are telling us they want and where things are going. And so if you want to be, if you want to be in the management business one day as a health system, 
I, and I'm not saying we do. I don't actually know if we want to be in the, in the population health business. We will get forced in that direction over time. But this is a, a low cost tool that's going to be particularly important as we try to figure out how to manage folks. There's a reason that your health plan is telling you to use this. They are, they are saying to you, hey, use Doctor on Demand and you can use it for free. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Please do. Big fan of the on-call doctor thing. My question really is, you know, if you're using this, how many patients Microphone. through this, this, how many patients through this, uh, I don't even know if it's right, um, are told through the virtual visit they don't need a doctor? Right? Oh, very few. I mean, what do they, what do they actually do or treat you for through the virtual visit? The, the vast majority of, of the calls are resolved on the call because it's, um, it's the same thing for the most part. It's, it, it takes, most of the volume comes at the, um, at the, it's like the retail clinic level. So it is sniffles and colds and rashes. It's uh, urinary tract infections or big ones, right? And, and so I think what we forget is that the majority of our interaction with a, with a clinician in, in any office visit is verbal. We're describing our symptoms. They're thinking about what that means. Can they take your blood pressure? Sure. Can they get your temperature? Sure. Can you do that yourself? Sure. These are things that you can do yourself at home if it's necessary for the visit. But mostly what you want and what we're seeing is people just want to talk to a doctor. They want to talk about the symptoms that they're experiencing. And generally speaking, and I think we're over 90% right now of the calls are fully resolved right there. And, and that's, we'd love for more of them to result in primary care relationships or more business, right? Make my life easier. If this was a big new patient engine, it's not right now. But what it does is help me to need and help drive us forward. And, and we'll, we will understand and know the value of virtual visits before any of our other competitors will. We'll be far ahead of them as more, more folks are moving towards this.